Welcome back to our Go programming series. Today we're diving into API testing using Go's Net HTTP HTTP test package. If you're building web applications or APIs with Go, unit testing is crucial to ensure your code is robust and reliable. In this video, we'll show you how to write unit tests for your API endpoints using HTTP test package. By the end, you'll have the skills to test your Go applications like a pro. So what is HTTP Test Package? It's a package provided by Go's standard library that helps us test HTTP servers. It allows you to create HTTP requests, record HTTP responses, and even mock servers for tests, all within the Go test files. This makes it incredibly powerful for testing your APIs without needing to spin up an actual server. Let's begin with this simple application. We have two APIs in this application. This API slash blogs lists all the blogs stored in the database in JSON format. This is one blog. To get a single blog, we can pass the ID in the URL like this, and it returns the blog in JSON format. We are going to write tests for these APIs. Let's look at the code. Here are the two APIs we are going to test. This API responds with the list of all blogs. And this one returns a particular blog based on the ID provided. This handler fetches all blogs from the model function. Then we set the content type header to application JSON. Finally, we respond with the blogs in JSON format. This handler is for the API that fetches a blog based on ID provided. Here, the ID is extracted and the blog is fetched from the DB using a model function. Then, the response headers and the fetches blog are written to the response writer. Let's also look at the model functions. The functions used in the controller are implemented here. There is some setup related code in this file. The function connect database makes db connection. db migrate function auto migrates the database. Let's go back to the controller. We are going to write tests for these two handler functions. I like to keep tests in a separate directory. So let's create a directory called tests to keep our test code. To keep things organized, we create two more directories in the tests directory controllers, and models. We will create a file, blogs controller, to keep test cases related to blogs APIs. The package would be controllers test. We named it so because we don't want it to get mixed up with the controllers package. First, we will implement test main function. This function is a special function in Go's testing framework that allows us to set up and tear down resources that will be used across multiple tests. Think of it as a main function, but specifically for testing purposes. It accepts testing.m, which is used for managing and controlling the overall execution of tests in a package. This is the code that sets up the database connection. Here is the connection string. We will be connecting to this DB, which is meant for test purposes only. Then the DB is created. In our application setup, we store the database connection in this variable db in models package. We will do the same in the tests too. This way, we don't have to change any functionality. Next, we run the migrations. Now the setup is complete. 
Next, we call m.run, which runs all the test functions in the current package. This is where all our tests will be executed. This function returns the status code. Let's receive it in a variable. After running the tests, we clean up the resources by closing cleaning the test database. This code here gets all the tables in the test DB. Then we drop all such tables. Finally, we exit the app with the returned status code of tests. Let's reorganize this code a bit. The DB setup and teardown code can be placed in the model's test package. Let's create a file called setup here. The package is models test. To be quick, I would paste the code here. This function does setup. And this one tears down the database. Let's replace this code with the functions we just implemented. Now that the test main function is ready, we will implement the real tests. Let's write tests to implement blogs index handler. Let's call this function test blogs index. Testing.t is the parameter to every test function. It is used to log test output, report failures and mark the test as skipped or failed. Here we're creating a new HTTP GET request to the blogs endpoint using HTTP test new request. This simulates a client request without actually starting a server. HTTP test. New recorder is used to record the response. This is a mock response writer that captures the HTTP response generated by our handler. Next, we seed our test database with some data. We create two blog objects, blog1 and blog2, and save them to the database. This setup ensures that our database has some initial data to work with when the test runs. Then we call our blogs index handler function, passing in the recorder and the, the request as arguments. This simulates handling an incoming request to the blog's endpoint. We then capture the result of the response with w.result and defer the closure of the response body to clean up resources after the test. After running the handler, we will check the status code of the response to ensure it's 200 OK. Though the HTTP test package provides ways for such a check, I prefer to use this package, Testify. This package provides ways to assert, such as to check if two values are equal or not equal, if a value is nil or not nil and many more. Let's get back to the code. Now we will check if the returned code is equal to 200 OK. For some reason, VS Code imported this package. Let's change it. We need to install this package. Now it is installed. This function expects testing t variable, the first value which is the response's status code, the second value is status OK, and the last argument is the message. Oh, this should be status code. Next check could be to see if the JSON response body is correct. This checks if the API response contains the correct data format. 
we decode the response body into our blog slice. Now we will check if there is any error in decoding. With the no error function, we look for error, indicating a problem with the response format. We can also check the length of the decoded blogs. We can do so with the len function. Next we can verify that the response data matches what we initially seeded into the database. This will further confirm that our handler correctly retrieves and returns blog data. Let's check the title and content of the first blog. In our implementation, the blogs are returned in descending order, so this has to be compared with blog 2. Similarly, we can check the second blog. We have completed our first test. Let's run this. This command runs all tests. It says no test files. Hmm. The files containing the tests should have their names ending in underscore test. Let's change this file's name. Now the test runs. We can see the test ran here and it passed. Now we will write a few more tests. Let's copy paste this function. This time we will test with an empty blogs table. Here we will empty the table. The API should still return 200. There shouldn't be any problem with JSON passing as well. The length of the entries should be zero. We don't need these assert calls. This test failed. Oh, this query is wrong. Now it should work. Yes, this test passed. We have successfully implemented tests for Blogs Index Handler. Now let's write a few tests for Blogs Show Handler. We will seed the DB with a blog. Next, we create our first subtest using t.run. This subtest is named Valid Blog ID and tests the scenario where the blog ID exists in the database. The second argument to the run function is function that runs the tests. We convert the blog ID to a string using using the format function. This ID will be used in our HTTP request to retrieve the blog. Here, we create a new HTTP get request to the slash blogs endpoint, appending the blog ID to the URL. This simulates a client request to view the blog with the given ID. Then we create our mock response writer. Next, we call the blog show handler, capture the response result, and defer closing the response body to clean up resources. Next, we check if the status code of the response is 200 OK, which means the request was successful and the blog was found. We then read and decode the JSON response body into a blog struct. This ensures that the response contains the expected data format. Finally, we verify that the returned blog's title and content match what we seeded. This confirms that the handler correctly retrieved the blog data.
Let's see if this works. It does. This is the subtest. We can add more subtests here itself. Here, I have pasted two more tests. This one tests the behavior when an invalid ID is given. This should return status code bad request. The final subtest, non-existent blog ID, checks how the handler behaves when the requested blog ID does not exist in the database. In case a non-existent ID is provided, it is expected to respond with not found status. Let's run these tests. Here are the subtests. All of them pass. That's a wrap on API unit testing with HTTP test in Go. We covered the basics of setting up your tests, verifying responses, and handling edge cases. Remember, thorough testing is key to building reliable applications. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more Go programming tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy coding.